all present for that session. Um, she really, man, we just sat down and uh, it was a sample that Kelly wanted to fuck with, you know what I'm saying, for something else. And we made, we had made another beat to the same sample. When I took that sample for this, for the uh, Skate Cans record, I took that sample and chopped it up and did some other shit with it. And uh, we built it from scratch. Like, he was right there. He, he watched me build that beat literally from thin air to what y'all, you know, here on YouTube or here on the Black Flag tape. You know what I'm saying? And did he have input? Like this oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He definitely had input. You know what I'm saying? He uh, told me what he wanted to do. And then, uh, especially with the hook, because, you know, after I did the beat and the beat, you know, came out the way it was, it was rocking and all that. Uh, I was like, yo. The hook need to be a bunch of scratching and random phrases or whatever. He was like, yeah, I wanted to be some of my phrases, shit from other songs. And he had acapellas and everything, too. So we went and took a bunch of his acapellas and, you know, put them on CD and some of the uh, some of from what he said on the actual record and uh, put them on CD. And I put them in the uh, you can't see it part of a jump, but the old CDJ and got the scratching and scratch that shit in or whatever and you know it, it was just it was a, it was one of those organic real genuine organic creative processes you know it wasn't a yeah i got a photo of beats i'm about to send to you let me hear let me know if you hear something you like you know what i'm saying like that was like that process was like a organic process you know what i'm saying now the the other way around is a lot more common would you say where you're yeah, not always for me at least you know what i'm saying because I, i'm one of them guys like i'm I'm real anti-social and I'm real to myself. I'm very to myself, so I'm not the guy that be at the events. Well, I wasn't the guy that would be at the events, you know, shaking hands and kissing babies and, you know, creating small talk to, you know, maybe come up on a, you know, opportunity, anything like that. I just never was good at that. But, uh, yeah, for the most part, yeah, that's how it usually is for me. I'm sitting on photos of beats and, you know, people hit back like, Yo, we, we like number four. We, we want to mess with number four, or we cut a record to number four. How much you want for this? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. And do you do more of this kind of networking now than you used to earlier in your career? Most definitely. I'm out and about now. <laughs> what led to that decision? Uh, a series of events, if you will. Um, uh, let me see. You know, we came down here on the music tip. Things took off. You know, they started going good, and then you know, I had a plateau. And my plateau kind of lined up with the crash of the music industry or whatever, or the crash of the economy. And, you know, the crash of urban music, you know, niggas start giving their stuff out for free and all that. And, you know, that hit me as a producer, you know, because now niggas ain't paying for beats. So now I was like, damn, I'm going to pay my mortgage. So saying all that to say, I ended up losing the house. Lost my first house. Uh, ended up having to get a nine to five, which I am still currently working. You know what I'm saying? driving a garbage truck for the city and you know going through that and having to deal with that every day kind of lit a fire up under my ass like yo that same shit you was on prior to this happening ain't gonna work it's not gonna take you up out of here you're gonna have to come up out your shell you're gonna have to bite the bullet and go out there and shake some hands and kiss some babies that's that's just the bottom line you gotta do it you know what i'm saying because it's I don't care what it is you do in life, even if it's something you got a passion for, it's going to be something about it that you don't like. That just comes with the territory of having breath and a heartbeat. Bottom line. So, you know, it took for me to, I've been working this job for about a half a hair over two years, and like, this shit that lit a fire up under my ass, like, yo, nigga, get out there and network. Ain't nobody going to do it for you. Or you want to you wanna stay at this bullshit ass job. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm out there now. What is it about people in the industry that turns you off? Uh, I'm going to say for the most part, not all people, but for the most part, nobody's genuine. Ain't nothing genuine about nothing. If you see somebody, <laughs> you see somebody hold a door for somebody, it's, a, it's an agenda with that. <laughs> you feel me? Nothing's genuine at all. Now, it's, 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 it's peppered with, sprinkled with people that are genuine, you know what I'm saying? But you got to, you go through a lot of bullshit to get to them people, you know what I'm saying? So that that's really that's what the turn off is for me. Nobody's genuine. You know, it's all fake, it's all fake smiles, fake handshakes, you know. That's what it is. But hey, guess what? I take that over driving this goddamn garbage truck every day. That's real. I most certainly will. <laughs> Did you ever spin vinyl? Yeah, back in like, woo, 94, 95. 
I was DJing back then. I, I did a little little stint with it, you know. I didn't like it too much. The only thing I really liked about the whole turntable and the mixer thing, I wanted to scratch, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to do what Q was doing in Juice. That was my whole thing. That's what I wanted to do. But, you know, it was other things that came with the territory that I didn't like. Like, back then, you was carrying those crates of records. You didn't have no laptop or a hard drive with a whole universe worth of music on it. The music you had was the music you carried in there <laughs> on them crates. So, yeah, I really wasn't into that. <laughs> So I kind of left it alone and transitioned into making beats. So you don't do DJ gigs at all anymore? No. And were you doing that back home or here? In no, Atlanta? I was doing that back home. Okay. Long before I moved down here. What uh, led to the decision to move to Atlanta? Uh, a couple things, but the main thing was just frustration with home. Like being at home, like the one thing I came to realize about Cleveland that I didn't see at first is that Cleveland is a blue collar city. Cleveland is an industrial city. That's what Cleveland was built on. Factories and car plants, steel mills and car plants, you know what I'm saying? And that's what Cleveland catered to. Cleveland doesn't cater to entertainment, you know what I'm saying? Not, not my day and age, you know what I'm saying? Not when I was running around. So it was like, dad, this place don't even cater to that. You trying to do something that this place don't cater to. You know, nobody cares about what's going on in Cleveland. You, you, you never hear anybody say, yeah, we're going to Cleveland to kick it for the weekend. Maybe when LeBron was there playing, but they really wasn't going to kick it. They was going to see LeBron. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of just took that and, you know, looked at Atlanta like, man, it's popping down there. That's what's, that's what's popping in Atlanta music. So the first opportunity I got, I took the first thing smoking up out of Cleveland and came on down and, you know, set some plays up that, that ended up working out and enabled me to move down here and stay down here for good.